Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my video about the emerging grievance genre in comic books and if the resurrected milestone comics is part of it. Before I start, 499 graphic novel, rock and roll ninja graphic novel. Both of these are complete stories, you're gonna love them. So um I had to <laughs> my sleep schedule kept getting worse and worse and worse till yesterday. I was up at like 1 p.m. And then I did a bunch of work and then I laid down to rest at like 6 and I woke up at 10.30. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like, ah. So basically I was like, the only way out is through. <laughs> I have to, I, even though I've slept for like 20 of the last 24 hours, I have to force myself to go to sleep at a normal time, wake up at a normal time. And I, I think, I think it, I think it worked. So today I'm going to finish getting out the, uh, the prints for Impossible Stars and then just and go to the next task. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I had all these tabs set up like <laughs> 20 hours ago. Something amazing has been happening. So when the pandemic and lockdown started and, you know, Diamond stopped distributing and the stores closed, um, all of a sudden DC had like lots of digital material, more than they ever did before. Now, originally they said this was like stuff that was repurposed from um, Walmart anthology comics that nobody read, but then it just like every day they had another story and this went on for like basically six months and then they started getting stuff that had never been in Walmart anthologies ever and then I noticed started noticing that there's multiple lines like this you got Marvel's voices you got truth and justice by DC you got represent exclamation point by DC I'll read all of the descriptions of these but they all basically boil down to this. Once upon a time, there was black people and something sad. The end. Uh, I reviewed Marvel's Voices a few days ago, uh, which was <laughs> celebrating Black History Month, even though they had like Jubilee, like right there on the front of the cover. Uh, and um, the stories are bad. But the thing is, they're not even like stories. They're literally like half a story. They're either the beginning or the end. And the point is, it doesn't matter because these are not meant to be read. The ex these exist for a couple reasons, none of which involve around <laughs> store selling them because some of these are digital only or customers actually reading them and enjoying them. So let's uh, read the descriptions. Represent exclamation point. Represent exclamation point. Stories of personal experiences, unheard voices and social revolution. New voices present relevant topical visions of social change and personal histories, some true to life, while others are semi-fictionalized accounts of real experiences. Um, the, the one that we got in the first issue was that bird watcher in Central Park who did say, let's just say, a very biased take on the actual event. Uh, his character was, of course, an angel. The other party was, of course, a devil, um, uh, the truth being more in the middle. Uh, but uh, I flipped through the other ones, and it's literally just once upon a time there were black people and something sad. Uh, it, these are books that you literally can't give away, even though they charge you oh, 84 cents. So <laughs> that shows you about how much confidence they have in them. Uh, but they're 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 awful. So um, innovative styles and compelling stories, which examine how our culture builds understanding. Tracing society's arc toward justice as we evolve in pursuit of a D does this sound like somebody like applying for a grant? This sounds like a grant application as we evolve in pursuit of a more just and compassionate world in Includes talent spotlights the first chapter. It's a bird by Christian Cooper is made available for free Okay, so let's see truth and justice truth and justice the ideals of truth and justice are concepts synonymous with DC's superheroes from the golden age of comics to the present day, and they're the foundation for this new anthology comic book series, Truth and Justice. This series explores the length and breadth of DC's rich character history, showcasing the heart and spirit of the wide-ranging characters featured across DC's multiverse. With an endless array of characters to choose from, heroes, villains, aliens, animals, you name it, we have it. And of course, we've got uh, Marvel's Voices, the World Outside Your Window, Marvel's acclaimed podcast series focusing on telling the stories of diverse creators and their unique perspectives becomes a one-shot of brand new adventures. So this one had a story about um, 
Blade in a Bodega um, being helped to fight three vampires uh, when two teenagers threw garlic rice in the face of their uncle and killed their uncle. Yeah, so this isn't about um, telling the stories of diverse creators. What this is, and what Truth of Justice is, and what Represent is, and what it looks like Milestone, oh, there you are, Milestone Returns is, is a way for corporations to uh, bolster the amount of minorities they have hired. They get to tell reporters, hey, the amount of uh, black, trans, and female creators uh, we hire has increased by 33% this year. And they go, oh, wow, yeah. So what do you have them on? Oh, just a bunch of shit, just crap. Just stuff we can't give away. I mean, we, we priced it at 84 cents and it doesn't sell. But, so a corporation gets to use minorities to make themselves look woke. Minorities allow themselves to be used as a resume booster and the fans in the comic book stores win, uh, win nothing. Yeah, they win, they win nothing. I was a little peevish because I paid like $5 for this. And half of it is material that I think was given away for like new comic book day. So um, they're bringing Milestone back. Now, I actually did not understand what Milestone was for like till last year. I thought it was just, you know, like DC employees and they're like, hey, we're going to do Milestone. It's going to be diverse voices, blah, 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 whatever. But it was actually a bunch of people who had worked for DC who started their own company, a separate entity, not a subsidiary, a totally different company. And then they got like a, a, a licensing type of deal uh, that they would be distributed by DC. And I don't know if there's some sort of, you know, seed money or investment. But um, I always just thought they were just like a different part, like, you know, of DC, but they weren't. Uh, there was later some uh, lawsuits. They brought it back three or four times. Perch did a good video about Milestone and the history of it. They were okay. <laughs> I mean, they, they were okay. Um, uh, they got a lot of press at the beginning. Um, but it just it just felt kind of odd because this is like 1993. And they were like really overemphasizing the race of the characters and the creators. And it was weird because... All of those creators were already doing very, very well. They were accomplished, they worked constantly, and they were respected. While on the other hand, we were being told they were marginalized and they were never given a break until right now. So it didn't, and it also kind of felt like, it's like, why are they, you're taking them off of like, I mean, out of all of them, Static's the only one, honestly, worth a damn. You got Black Superman, Black Carrie Kelly, Trash Can Iron Man, and uh, basically Black Spider-Man. Um, but his stories, I would actually say, especially after rereading his origin, um, I would say that Static actually has kind of like more depth than uh, uh, Peter Parker. We start off right here, and oh boy. So, you know, memory can play tricks on you. I remember just thinking Milestone comics were super mediocre, and then I went to go reread some recently, especially, you know, um, uh, Perch was, you know, telling which ones he liked. Um, and I forgot they had that, like, watercolor, uh, coloring style. So it looks like the background's from Caillou. I forgot about that. Uh, one thing I was shocked is that Static's origin in issue two is, like, really good. It's, like, really, really good. And then this, uh, Bounding Into Comics, they even have a link to, like, the, uh, the cartoon. And I guess, I guess they did... Um, you know, the uh, origin, like, pretty straightforward. So the origin is that um, Virgil was this uh, nerd. And I'm telling you, like, you know how right now when they're like, oh, someone's a nerd. And it's like, they're just like, hi, I'm a basically normal person, but I just said Star Wars. Oh, my gosh, what a nerd. Um, Virgil is like a total spaz. Um, there's something kind of likable about him. But you can also see why he would be a total magnet for bullies. Um, so he has this guy named, I'm not kidding, Biz Money B, a white rapper bully in an urban school. Just go with it. <laughs> and um, he's messing with him. So this uh, friend of Virgil's, or is he a friend, basically gives him a gun and says, hey, there's about to be a gang war tonight. Your bully is going to be there. If you show up and you just take him out, that's basically like the easiest way to murder someone ever because 
The cops do not. When I lived in Austin one time, they had a murder where two <laughs> two criminals met in a parking lot, killed each other, fell down on the ground, dropped their weapons. You know how happy that homicide detective was? He's like, that one shot the other one. Okay, yeah, I'm going home. Uh, like, that's the dream. This is kind of the dream for a bullied kid. It's like, oh, my bully's probably going to get shot tonight. I could show up, shoot him, and then we can just be like, oh, darn, that gang violence. So it's a really cool story, and he's got him right in his sights, although kind of shaky. And he says, you know, uh, he's, but he's not a killer. So he ends up throwing the, uh, the gun into the river. And then there's tear gas. The police show up because they're actually doing their job. There's a gang, you know, war going on. They fire this tear gas with experimental compound in it. Virgil is nearby. He breathes it in. He gets uh, superpowers. That's a, actually like a legit, uh, very good, and actually has depth to it. And then there's this shit. So we start off and we got the evil white police officer. There's a riot going on. <laughs> That's good writing. So they head off to stop the riot. We need to shut it down and get things under control right away. But guess what, man? It's Black Lives Matter. And number one, as we've learned from Nubia and this book, there is 0% violence at any Black Lives Matter. In fact, <laughs> like... One of the things I think is so funny is when people want to go to extremes and you're not supposed to raise your hand and say, I have a question. You're like, so none of them? Not one. Well, there is occasionally violence, but it is always white bullies starting. <laughs> so uh, we start off, we're at Black Lives Matter and um, they're just walking, looks like through a park. And then the cops like, this is like blowing their mind. What's this crap? Who do they think they are? Like these cops have like never seen a protest ever. Turn around and get back to school or be arrested for truancy. And then like one guy says, stop killing innocent people and we will. And they're like, okay, no, 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 no. We didn't say, say one sentence. We said immediately go back to school. Oh, it's just, just our shooting. And they just say, he goes, fine then, let him fly. So they shoot the uh, tear gas. And, like, people's skin starts melting off. <laughs> Here's the really great, uh... <laughs> this is written like it's a radio play. It's like, is that kid's face melting? Like at the end of Indiana Jones. It's like, <laughs> you're seeing it. You're looking at it. Why would you describe it? Whoa, what the hell is in this stuff? We need to call some ambulances. Don't get soft. They asked for it. Oh, wait, I, should, I probably should have... No. Don't get soft. They asked for it. Yeah, that works better. So then uh, Virgil, who we have not met before, and he means nothing to us because he's a character who has not spoken. He has superpowers. Oh, that's some good writing. He wakes up. Virgil, of course, looks like some anime twink instead of just like a regular kid like he did in the original version. Then we cut to Trash Can Iron Man who uh, created the riot gas that's melting everyone's face off. And we know it's melting their faces off because the cop says, look at those people whose faces are not usually melting, but they are. After we shot the tear gas, it was probably invented by some sort of black person. So he's like, uh, they really think they are gonna catch me slipping. They think I don't know. They have electronic surveillance on my house. That's why I kept this loud on the DL. And all those families whose kids died, they're going to come after me. Come get some. I got something for all of you. There's some compassion right there. Hey, sorry your kid's face <laughs> was melted off by my experimental gas. But if you come for me, I'm going to kill your ass. Or maybe I'll just melt your face off too. It's kind of a clutch move. Yeah, that's a go-to move. So then he uh, transforms into Trash Can Iron Man. And then the police are, of course, there because no black people go three minutes without having an altercation with the police. Mr. Metcalf, Dakota police, open up! Well, that was quick. Must have been tracking me the whole time. So you may have a question. This is your secret lair because you said you knew they were tracking you, so you found a place they could. Aren't you? I don't think you're a very good scientist. You make tear gas uh, and then it melts everyone's faces off. You have absolutely no empathy for them at all. No compassion. You're like, those fuckers, I swear to God. Oh, I'll melt all your faces off. It's like that Captain Planet parody. Face melted off. Face melted off. <laughs> Just melting everyone's face off. Um, he must have really liked that movie, Face Off. 
must have been tracking me the whole time. We know you're armed! So they explode the door? What did they do to the door? That's like the whole wall. You're under arrest! Drop your- What is that? Of course they start shooting him like a million times as soon as they see him. <laughs> Some good writing. You didn't even give me a warning before you emptied your pistols at me. Rifle. An unarmed man. What's that? What's on you? The blackness that protects. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's that? What's on you? The blackness that protects me? Does it scare you? I haven't even started shooting back yet. Oh, so you are going to shoot back. Okay, so just so so this is the cops. They're like uh so this uh, guy who thinks he's Elon Musk or some shit just melted a bunch of kids' faces off. And now he's running to a hidden headquarters that he thinks we don't know about. Uh, so we burst in and he's wearing some sort of trash can Iron Man suit. Pretty scary. We thought he was going to kill us or, you know, at least melt our faces off. So, yeah, we did start shooting at him with our rifles, which he thinks are pistols for some reason. And then he got weirdly racial. Does anyone look at this costume? And your eyes gravitate towards, like, the black coloring on the arms, thighs, and face. I would kind of just notice, like, this really trash-ass Iron Man. Like, I, I would have been confused at first. Like, the, the blackness. What? Don't you see my biceps in, like, the top of my forearm? And, like, like two-thirds of my thigh. But it's also my blackness. You get it? I'm doing, like, a... I'm like ta Coats Coates in like an Iron Man suit made by Oscar the Grouch, basically. Now go tell your bosses, don't never ever come around here no more. Wouldn't it be no mo? So then we get like the worst exposition ever. So you got this TikTok kid or whatever, and he's finding out all, he's spilling all the tea. Uh, and there's a freaking hospital where all the kids who are getting their faces melted off are just not being treated. They're just making them sit in the freaking waiting room forever. This is the room where they keep the kids who can't afford a room of their own. They bandage them up to keep their skin from falling off their bodies. And that's all they do for them. So one of the problems with a story like this is supposed to be like, man, this is how it is. You know, you're walking down the street and like every cop shoots every black person the first second they see them. It's like... Why would you walk down the street if that was true? That's a terrible idea. It's ridiculous. It's over the top. It's not funny. It's not fun. It's silly. It's not believable. And it constantly takes you out of the story. This is the ward where they keep the kids too dangerous to be around people. Well, they don't lock it, so why don't the kids just leave? This is messed up. This girl's turning into smoke. Man, what are they doing to her? This, this is award winning. How, how did you luck out, DC? How did you get writing this good? Hey, do you have a visitor's pass? Uh-oh, gotta go. <laughs> you can just walk through every ward of this hospital that's having, you know, the strangest event in, like, the history of this city ever. All these kids with superpowers and their faces melting off. He's just like, uh-oh, gotta scram. So then we get a weird-ass origin where they kind of keep skipping forward in it on Virgil, and he's a completely different character. Uh, to motivate myself, I would channel my anger over every slight, every insult. It worked after a while. I got good at it. So then here's the, uh, this was the guy who was Biz Money B in the original version. But the anger kept burning in my belly. So then we get, they keep moving backward and forward in time in a really odd way. Virgil, you made it. Who is passing up an invitation from Frida? I didn't think you were the protest march type, Virgil. I'm a black person who thinks my life matters. What's complicated about that? So then, oh my gosh, how many days has it been since a white bully showed up at a Black Lives Matter protest to start some trouble? Oh, so now the Oreo wants to claim blackness to get some white booty. Frank, you're such a jerk. You know, it's racist to call being smart white right quiet slut shut up and then this is the caption oh that felt good thanks for the training dad wow the nerd grows some balls to protect his ivory princess or maybe no one should call a woman a slut and then uh 
this character who we haven't met before is like, yo, you see those white boys jumping that dude from science class? Wait, now they're just noticing like for the first time ever? It's at this extremely diverse inner city high school that there's one ginger just running the show. Hello, police? It's a riot. <laughs> Are you being symbolic like you're having a really great time or it's like it's an actual riot? So then we get cut back to Biz Money B. Um, sorry, Frank. And uh, he got powers too. So now he gets in a fight with uh, Virgil. Now remember, Virgil was like a super spaz. Uh, a good kid. He was basically given an opportunity to murder someone and totally get away with it. And he's like, no, I'm not a killer. I can't do that. But then these two guys who basically have generic high school hallway beef. And then Virgil basically tries to murder him. He just learned his powers. He hits him with full force electricity. Everyone is so sick of you being a bully. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Virgil, please, you're killing him. Killing him? Am I? I've never used my powers on a person before. Yeah, fry him. That's what he gets. Is this too much? He deserves it. But that's enough. Aw, oh, come on, man. Finish him. This power is changing me. I need to choose what kind of change that's going to be. And then he lies to the police after almost murdering a kid in the hallway. So we went from a character who had depth and humanity and had a very distinct personality to we have generic, woke, Black Lives Matter anime twink, Virgil, who almost kills people over relatively minor high school beef. Um, there's no depth to this story. Of course, every Black Lives Matter gathering is completely angelic. <laughs> the only problems that ever happen are when evil white people show up. Um, uh, every white officer shoots every black person the second they see them. Uh, yeah, so this is the grievance genre. Again, this is not meant to be read. It's not meant to be sold by a comic book shop. It's made to exist so that when the Daily Beast does their yearly hit piece against, you know, random targets in the comic book industry, uh, DC or Marvel gets to say, oh, you know, we've uh, increased our employment of African Americans by 33% this year. And they're like, okay, yeah, cool. We'll, we'll destroy you next year. We'll find another target. Uh, we get some resume boosters by some literally who's in the industry. Four ninety nine graphic novel. Rock and Roll Ninja graphic novel. And I will have, oh, they're bringing back America Chavez, so I'll be reviewing that later today. Thanks for watching. Bye.